Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Jonah Central tutorial. It has been a while, so thank you for being patient. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make anything in Blender respond to sound and music. Let's begin. So to start off, I'm going to grab the top end of the screen right here. I'm going to drag it out and now we have two uh, viewports. But we're going to switch this from the 3D viewport to the video sequencer. Then we're going to grab the bottom corner right here, drag this up, and we're going to switch this to the graph editor. This is the setup that I use to get things to respond to music. Let's start off simple. By the way, you can press N to pull up this transform menu right here. Uh, let's say we wanted the cube to grow and shrink on the x-axis along with my music. So I'll show you how to do that. So start off by clicking add, go down to sound, and then select whatever sound you're using for your project. So I made a really small, simple musical thing that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. It's very, very simple, but it should do the job. We want it to grow and shrink on the x-axis depending on what's happening with music. So how we do that is to start we want a keyframe for the x-axis. You can do that by hovering your mouse over x and pressing i, or you could right click and add keyframes, but I just like hovering and pressing i because it's easy. So now as you can see some new things popped up in our graph editor, which is awesome. So we can go down to object transform and go to the x scale, because that's what we want affected, the x scale of our cube. So. Uh, next, we're going to want to click key and bake sound to F curves. This basically, instead of adding keyframes manually, it automatically adjusts the X scale according to our sound, which uh, I'm going to do right now. You just do that by selecting the same sound file that you did for the sequencer. Now, as you can see, I have added it in, and now we have these bumps that represent the volume changes in the music. So it's working. Awesome. But there's an issue. The cube goes super tiny and then eventually infinitely flat once there is zero volume. In my opinion, it shrinks too much and doesn't grow large enough. So let me show you how to adjust the parameters for the growth and the shrinking of your object. So if you hover your mouse, in the graph editor, press N, you can open up this side menu. Now if you go to modifiers and add modifier, there's a super cool modifier called envelope, which you can use to adjust the parameters of this uh, F curve. So you can add a control point. It doesn't matter where. If it does, then I've never encountered any issues or differences depending on where I put a control point. But now we can use all of these values to adjust the parameters. Now, I'm going to be straightforward with you. I'm not 100% sure what any of this means, but I know that depending on how you drag things, you can see it get physically changed in the graph editor. Let me just make these smaller so we can see more. So for example, if I turn up the or down the reference point, as you can see, the graph just goes up and down on the y-axis. If you're happy with how much it grows and shrinks, you can just adjust its minimum value and maximum value, which is pretty neat. But let's say we want a little bit more control. That's where this minimum and this maximum comes in. If I were to turn up the maximum, it goes down and shrinks. Don't ask me why, because I do not know. And if we change the minimum, as you can see, it also shrinks, but it instead of going down, it brings the bottom up, which is pretty neat. So despite the fact that I don't know exactly what these do, you can use them to adjust the parameters. So for example, let's say I wanted this to go up, but I also don't like how much it grows and shrinks. So I'm going to turn down this minimum value. And as you can see, the strength of the parameters has gone down, but it's net up which is pretty neat. So if I were to go back to the beginning of the animation and play this out, as we can see the smallest point on the cube uh, in shrink and growth wise is this, 
which is a little bit wider than default, but that's okay. Now we're gonna play the audio. Now, instead of becoming completely flat at the end and growing huge, it's more tame, but it's also wider in general, which is pretty neat. This doesn't only work for scale or rotation or location, it actually works with shading as well. So for example, you could have that happen with the roughness of something, or you could have it happen in a value node, or you can use it in the mix of a mix RGB shader, which is pretty cool. It's very versatile, and you can use it to make some pretty cool auto audio visualizers or just some effects for a video or an animation or a school project or whatever. Thank you for being patient with me and I hope this tutorial helped out and I'll hopefully see you guys on another video. See you later.